A message. A message from a Muslim to a Catholic priest part 3. 7. Priesthood. The concept of priesthood is not found in Islam, there is no one holier than Allah. No matter if you are educated in religion, all theologians are not holy simply because they took up religion or devoted their lives for religion. You might have two brothers, one takes up engineering and the other one takes up religion. The engineer gets promotions from junior to senior engineer while the other one starts as a deacon, then promoted to a priest and then became a bishop. He might get promotions as the time passes and, depending on other factors, he may progress up to the level of a cardinal and he may become a pope. Even the pope, who is claimed to have the keys of heaven, is not born a pope. He went through all the lower religious rank positions and was then promoted from one up to another. However, did he get promoted by Allah? Certainly, the answer is no. The Pope himself is elected from a number of cardinals and Allah does not grant him that position neither the keys of heaven. When popes die suddenly or found dead in their beds, the council of cardinals usually elects one of those cardinals who are always or mostly Europeans to be the new pope. Again, the decision regarding who becomes the pope is not Allah's decision. In Islam, we do not have clergymen titles. Those who are more knowledgeable than other average Muslims are known as ulama or scholars. This title does not give them immunity against sins or set them closer to Allah unless their inner belief and closeness to Allah is superior to others. Their vast knowledge should make them know Allah better and thus fear him more. Allah, exalted be he, says, only the people of knowledge among his slaves fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is almighty, all-forgiving. Fatter, 28 and amongst men, animals and cattle, camels, cows and sheep, are different colors like that which was mentioned. Only those who exalt Allah and have true fear of Him are the knowledgeable ones, because they recognize His attributes, His sacred law and the proof of His power. Allah is mighty, no one can overpower Him. He forgives of the sins of His servants who repent. Fatter, 28 This very critical issue is only judged by Allah who knows what everyone conceals or reveals. Allah, exalted be he, says. O people, we have created you from a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize one another. Indeed, the most noble of you before Allah is the most righteous among you. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Al-Hujarat, 13. O people! Indeed, I have created you from one male, your father Adam, and one female, your mother Eve. Therefore, your lineage is the same, so some of you should not take pride in lineage over others. Then, I made you into many nations and dispersed tribes, so that you may recognize one another, not so that you take pride in them, because pride can only be due to Allah consciousness, indeed. The most noble from among you according to Allah is the one who is most mindful of him. Indeed, Allah is aware of your conditions, knowing of what levels of perfection and deficiency you are on, nothing is hidden from him. Al-Hujarat, 13. Moreover, it came in the Prophet's hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Allah does not look at your figures, nor at your attire but he looks at your hearts and accomplishments. Sahih Muslim. Clergymen in Christianity, Catholics in particular, do not get married and nuns do not either. On the other way, Muslims do not see any logic in that. It is normal that every man needs a woman and every woman needs a man, that is our nature. There is no need for this suffering. The greatest Muslim scholars are married. They have sexual intercourse with their wives and they have children. They live normal life and at the same time they worship all day and night. They also deliver preaches and religious ceremonies and they author books. Many of the new converts to Islam who were clergy people before are married now. We think that when a clergyman is married, that would even help him to do his religious duties better. There is no point to say that priests and nuns do not want sex or do not have a desire for that. Then, why do we often hear about abuse scandals of Christian clergymen and women who have committed illegal sex with each other or with people from outside the church? More surprisingly, news about child abuse by priests has gone viral recently. I am sure this happens because they have neglected and abandoned a natural desire in humans that is unsatisfied legally through lawful marriage. 
If you convert to Islam, you will have no problem in that. You can be a religious man and get married at the same time. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Then we sent our messengers in their footsteps, and we sent after them Jesus, son of Mary. We gave him the gospel, and instill kindness and mercy in the hearts of those who followed him. As for monasticism, they invented it we did not prescribe it for them seeking thereby Allah's pleasure, yet they did not observe it faithfully. So we gave those who believed among them their reward, but most of them are evildoers. Al-Hadid, 27. Then followed them up with my messengers and I sent them one after the other to their nations. I sent after them Jesus the son of Mary and gave him the gospel, placing gentleness and mercy in the hearts of those who brought faith in him. They were affectionate and merciful to one another, but innovated extremism into their religion and left aside marriage and comforts which I had made permissible for them. I did not seek that from them, they made it necessary upon themselves and in doing so innovating in the religion. I only sought that they follow them my pleasure which they did not do, and so I granted those who believed from them their reward. However, the majority of them left my obedience by rejecting what my messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought to them. Al-Hadid, 27 All human beings stand individually responsible for their own actions and their own beliefs. No one can take that responsibility away from them. If you think that anyone is ordering you to act against what you sincerely believe to be the will of Allah, you are duty-bound to disobey that order and instead obey Allah. This is the principle that Allah is the sovereign. To find answers about issues related to judgments and regulations in Islam, you will find it useful to consult those who have studied the religion sources carefully, the scholars. 8. Baptism There is no baptism in Islam in the sense that it exists in the Christian. Tradition Baptism signifies salvation for the most part. In Islam we do not have the principle or concept of salvation as we believe we are born innocent and commit sins in our lives later on due to weakness, lust, greed, etc. So a ritual such baptism would not really fit into Islam as there is not a concept for it to fall under. In the Catholic world, there is a popular belief that teaches that all humans inherit sin from their parents. The doctrine is often called the original sin. So, Christians baptize their children because they say children are born with sin. The sin of Adam and Eve when they opposed Allah and listened to the Satan and ate from the tree that Allah warned them not to eat from. Jews, Christians and Muslims all agree that Allah is the most merciful. If that is so, how is it possible that Allah did not forgive Adam and Eve for their first small sin according to Christianity? Yet, he is prepared to forgive millions of Christians who commit major sins such as adultery, theft and homosexuality day and night. This is plain contradictory. How it can be consistent with the mercy of Allah that an innocent newly born infant is born with an inherited sin? That infant is still immature and committed nothing to be labeled as sinful. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Say, O Prophet, should I seek a Lord other than Allah, when He is the Lord of everything? Every soul will face the consequence of its actions. No bearer of burden will bear the burden of another. Then to your Lord is your return, and He will inform you concerning that over which you used to differ, al anam 164. Say, O Messenger, to these idolaters, shall I search for someone other than Allah as a Lord when He, may He be glorified, is the Lord of everything? He is the Lord of those things that you worship besides him. No innocent person will bear the sin of another. Then your return will be to your Lord alone on the day of judgment, and he will inform you about religious matters that you used to differ about when you were in the world. al 264 However, Muslims believe that Allah has forgiven Adam. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Then Adam received some words from his Lord, and he accepted his repentance. He is the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. Al-Baqarah Adam received the words given to him by Allah and was inspired to ask for forgiveness with them. These words of forgiveness are mentioned in Surah Al-Iraf, 23, they said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will certainly be of the losers. Allah accepted Adam's turning to him and forgave him, for he is always forgiving and merciful towards his creation. Al-Baqarah, 37 Muslims do not baptize their children because children are pure and they did not commit the sin of Adam and Eve and Allah, the most merciful, surely forgave Adam and Eve for that. 
This sin is much smaller than the sins people commit every day like adultery, theft, or murder. If someone kills 10 people or more, his children will never be executed just because of their father's sin. Surely, this cannot be done according to the laws of justice on the earth. So, the question is, do the humans on the earth have more justice than their Lord? If we assume that Allah is still angry with Adam and Eve and the newborn infants, would not we say to ourselves that Allah is not the most merciful? Allah's mercy is far beyond what you believe. In Islam, we believe that all the children who die before puberty or before sexual maturity are admitted to the paradise. In this sense, Imam al-Nawawi said, The reliable Muslim scholars agreed that any Muslim child who dies will be among the people of paradise because he was not responsible, i.e., had not yet reached the age of account. Commentary on Sahih Muslim, 16207 It came also in the Hadith of Samura, a companion of the Prophet, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. saw the children of the Muslims and the children of the Mushrikin, disbelievers, with Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him, in the paradise. Al-Bukhari Islam guides that every child that is born is born on nature. And the inherent nature of all human beings is to believe in the one Lord Creator who created everything in existence to IT is only his parents' guardians who formulate rituals to initiate them into. There are religions other than Islam. What contradicts belief and even logic is that baptism is done once and for all, and is often considered valid, even if the child eventually apostatizes. 9. Islamic Law, Fiqh and Sharia For a proper understanding of the historical development of Islamic law, the terms Fiqh and Sharia need to be defined. Fiqh has been loosely translated into English as Islamic law and so has Sharia, but these terms are not synonymous either in the Arabic language or to the Muslim scholar. Fiqh literally means the true understanding of what is intended. An example of this usage can be found in the Hadith of the Prophet, May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, to whomsoever Allah wishes good. He gives the Fiqh, true understanding, of the religion, Sahih al-Bukhari. Technically, however, Fiqh refers to the science of deducing Islamic laws from evidence found in the sources of Islamic law. By extension it also means the body of Islamic laws so deduced. Sharia literally means a water hole where animals gather daily to drink, or the straight path as in the Quranic ayah, then we put you, O Prophet, on a clear way of the religion. So follow it and do not follow the desires of those who have no knowledge. al Jathiyah, 18 O Messenger, then I put you on an ordained way regarding the matter of Islam and which calls them to faith and good actions. So follow this way and do not follow the desires of those who do not know the truth, and so their desires lead them away from the truth. Those who do not know the truth will not be able to hold back all his punishment from you if you follow their desires. And the oppressors from all sects and creeds help and support one another against the believers. And Allah is the helper of those mindful of him by carrying out his commands and refraining from his prohibitions. al Jathiya 18 Islamically, however Sharia refers to the sum total of Islamic laws. Which were revealed to Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and which are recorded in the Holy Quran as well as deducible from the Prophet's divinely guided lifestyle, the Sunnah. From the previous two definitions, the following three differences may be deduced. 1. Sharia is the body of revealed laws found both in the Holy Quran and in the Sunnah, while Fiqh is a body of laws deduced from Sharia to cover specific situations not directly treated in Sharia law. 2. Sharia is fixed and unchangeable, whereas Fiqh changes according to the circumstances under which it is applied. 3. The laws of Sharia are, for the most part, general, they lay down. Basic Principles In contrast, the laws of Fiqh tend to be specific, they demonstrate how the basic principles of Sharia should be applied in given circumstances. The primary difference between Islamic law and other legal systems is that the legislator, the originator of law, is Allah, the Almighty. Accordingly, the Holy Quran is the principal source of Islamic legislation. It contains the rules by which the Muslim world is governed and forms the basis for relations between man and his Lord, between individuals, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, as well as between man and things which are part of creation. Though there are other sources of law, i.e., ijma, consensus, qiyas, analogy, ijtihad, progressive reasoning by analogy, the Holy Quran is the first and foremost source. 
followed by the Hadith and Sunnah of the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. The Holy Quran, the Holy Quran is revealed speech to Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, which is inimitable, whose recitation is considered worship. Which has been mass transmitted to us. It is definitively authentic. The word of Allah is absolute, that is to say, it is independent of time and place, it addresses all, not just those at the time of the Prophet, nor simply those in the Arabian Peninsula. Any element drawn from other legal sources must absolutely be in full conformity with the word of Allah in the Holy Quran. The Sunnah of the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. The Sunnah is defined as statements, actions, tacit approvals, or qualities related about the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. These two sources represent foundations for determining the conformity of any action with the rules and purpose of Sharia. However, Sharia remains open to possible interpretations and development. Thus, the other secondary sources of Sharia are Ijma, consensus linguistically, it means to be determined and tenacious. In the terminology of the jurists, it is the agreement of the Amma, nation, of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, on a matter of religious significance. This agreement removes any doubts or alternative possibilities that might arise through an exclusive reliance on the proof itself. For this reason, an object of such a consensus must be acted upon, it is impermissible to oppose it. A consensus must be based on evidence, for it is wrong to adopt an opinion without evidence in matters of sharia. The Islamic nation cannot unanimously agree on an error, as is narrated in numerous hadiths. An example is that which is narrated by Abdullah bin Dinar on the authority of Ibn Omar, who said that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah will not unite my Ummah, or, perhaps, he said the Ummah of Muhammad, on misguidance. The hand of Allah is with the group, and whoever deviates from it takes himself to hell. Abu Isa explained that, according to scholars, the group refers to the people of Feek and Hadith. Another example is narrated by Anas bin Malik who said, I heard the Prophet saying my Amma, nation, will not unite on misguidance, so if you see them differing, follow the great majority. The basis of Ijma may be a text from the Holy Quran and Sunnah, or it may equally be an analogical argument, custom, or other types of Ijtihad, individual interpretation. Kiyas, analogical reasoning Kiyas is the application of one case to another because of a common element between them for the purposes of affirming or denying a judgment on both of them. The scholars proved the authoritativeness of Kiyas through many evidences. These include the ayah, and so take a lesson, O you people of insight. Al-Hashr, too. Other proofs include the ayat, whenever they hear any news of security or fear, they spread it. If they referred it to the messenger or to those in authority among them, those with sound judgment among them could know it. Were it not for Allah's grace and mercy, you would all have followed Satan, except for a few. Al-Nisa, 83 Whenever there comes a public matter comprising safety and happiness for the Muslims, or matters of fear and sadness, the hypocrites rush to spread its news amongst the people. If they had waited and referred the matter to Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, and to those in charge of their affairs. Those who are able to reason and draw conclusions would know what is to be done with respect to spreading such news or concealing it. If it were not for Allah's grace and mercy on you, almost all of you would have followed the whisperings of Satan. Anissa, 83 And we have missed nothing in the record, then to their Lord they will be gathered. al 38 There is no animal on earth or any bird flying in the sky except that they are species like you, O children of Adam, with respect to their creation and provision. I have not left out anything in the preserved tablet. The knowledge of all of them is with Allah. Then they will all be gathered to their Lord on the day of rising for the final decision and each will be recompensed according to what they deserve. al 38 We may add to these ayat other evidences, such as the hadith of The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, when sending Mu'adh to Yemen. When he did so, he asked him, if a judicial matter comes before you, how will you judge? Mu'adh said, I will judge by the Book of Allah. The Prophet replied, And if you don't find it in the Book of Allah? He responded, then, by the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. He said, 
and if you find it neither in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah nor in his book. He replied, I will exercise my judgment, and will not refrain from doing so. The Prophet struck his chest and said, Praise be to Allah who endowed the Messenger of the Messenger of Allah with that which pleases the Messenger of Allah.